The movie transports us way back like 20,000 years ago to a really old Europe. There's this brave gang of hunters led by their fearless boss, Tao. They're getting ready to go after a bunch of steppe bison. They make a big line of spears that scares the bison and makes them rush towards a dangerous cliff. But in all the craziness, three bison hang back and one tough bull is dead set on going after Tao's son, Keda. Keda is young and full of energy. That bull beats up Keda pretty bad and drags him super close to the edge of the cliff. But Tao saves the day with a perfectly aimed spear throw that stops Keda from falling. But the real story starts about a week before all this. The young folks in the tribe have to prove they can make spears. Only two of them, Keda and his loyal buddy Kappa, show they've got what it takes. They get a special spot on the last hunting trip before the really harsh winter comes. As part of becoming adults, they have to go through a tough test. They get hit by their fellow tribe members and get some advice from the wise shaman around a campfire. So there's this part where Keda pretends to be asleep but actually listens to his parents, Tao and Ro, talking. Ro thinks Keda might not be ready for hunting because he's too kind. But Tao is all about Keda proving himself and earning his spot in the tribe. Then the next morning, the hunting gang says goodbye to their families and gets blessings from the shaman. Keda's mom, Ro, again gives him an extra piece of fur for luck. They start their journey and follow the sacred path, which is a special route marked by old rock sculptures and paintings made by their ancestors. These things show them the way to the hunting grounds. While they're on their journey, they meet another group of hunters. This group is led by a guy named C, who's an old buddy of Tao's. C is really sad because he recently lost his own son. The two groups decide to team up for their adventure. As they keep going, Keda tries super hard to show his dad he can do stuff. But he has a tough time starting a fire and can't bring himself to kill a boar like the other guys did. He starts feeling even more like he's not good enough. Then one night, they're all hanging around a campfire when something suddenly scares them. They get ready to defend themselves, but then they let their guard down too soon. Out of nowhere, a big scary cave lion jumps out and grabs Kappa. The lion takes Kappa to eat him. The next day, the guys get together to make a cairn, which is like a special memorial for Kappa. It's a way to remember his spirit going to the afterlife. They keep going on their journey, stopping sometimes to hunt and take a break. One night, they find a big and safe cave to sleep in. Tao decides it's the right time to give Keda a tattoo of the constellations just like his own. He thinks this way, Keda will always know how to get back home. It's a long and painful process, but it makes a strong connection between them. Days go by and they keep pushing on until they find tracks that lead to a herd of steppe bison, just like at the start of their trip. But things get bad again when Keda slips and falls from a cliff. He lands on a lower ledge and breaks his leg, passing out. Tao tries super hard to save him, but the other hunters know it's too late. While they get ready to move the bison, Tao stays by the cliff, feeling really sad and not wanting to accept what happened. So now that the hunting groups are split evenly, Cecine heads back home, leaving Tao's group with one last night of camping before they know it's time to move on. The next morning, Tao makes another cairn and he's still really sad, shedding tears. Many hours after the others leave, a vulture lands on Keda, trying to eat him. This wakes Keda up in a big surprise. He manages to fight off the bird by twisting its neck, and then he realizes how bad his situation is. Even though his leg is broken, Keda tries to get down from where he's hanging. But there aren't many rough things to grab onto, and he ends up hanging there painfully for a little while. Then a storm comes and floods the area below him. Keda finally accepts that things are really tough, and he lets go falling into the water and passing out again. When Keda wakes up the next morning, the rain has stopped and the water from the flood has gone away. Keda is really determined to survive. He drinks water from a puddle nearby and makes a makeshift splint for his hurt foot. He goes slow, but he starts to make his way back up to the top of the cliff. When he gets there, he finds a memorial left by his dad. But he's so frustrated and lonely that he kicks it away. He figures out that he's on his own now and has to find his way home by himself. Keda starts his journey all by himself going through the wild. He eats bugs to stay alive, fills up his water bottle whenever he can and sleeps up in trees at night to stay safe from animals that might want to eat him. Then one sunny day, a scary gang of wolves finds him. Keda climbs up a tree real fast and fights off one of the wolves by stabbing it when it grabs his leg. He holds onto the tree until the wolves get tired and go away, except for the one he hurt. Keda thinks about using his spear to finish off the hurt wolf, but he can't bring himself to do it. Instead, he tries to ignore it, but the wolf keeps making sad sounds that he can't stand. Keda feels really sorry for the wolf, so he decides to help it. He ties the wolf's snout so it can't bite and takes it to a nearby lake to clean its wound. But they can't stay long because there are hyenas lurking around. So Keda takes the wolf to a safe cave where they can rest without any trouble. The next morning, Keda finds a mortar among a pile of bones. 
He uses it to make a kind of ointment from plants and puts it on his hurt foot. The wolf manages to get its snout free. Keita notices the wolf is acting nicer, so he decides to share his water with it, even though the wolf grumbles a lot before accepting it. Kegadav goes even further and uses the fur his mom gave him to clean the wolf's wound. He even shares some worms he finds with the wolf, but they soon realize that just eating worms won't be enough for them. So Keita decides to be brave and goes hunting for the first time. He uses a rock to catch a rabbit and then starts a fire to cook it, which he's never done before. The wolf tries to grab the rabbit, but Keita tells it who's boss and follows what his dad taught him. He sets up some rules like he eats first and then he feeds the wolf, but the wolf still doesn't want to get too close. Winter is getting closer really fast and Keita knows he has to find his way home before it snows. He's not sure if he can do it without his dad, but he knows he has to try. Keita gathers up stuff he needs and fights with the wolf to get his fur back. Then he leaves the cave and starts going home. But the wolf won't leave him alone, no matter how many times he asks it to go away. Little by little, Keita gets used to having the wolf around all the time. He even starts teaching it things. They try to hunt together, and at first it's kind of hard to get their actions to match up. But they keep trying, and they get better at it. When it gets dark, Keita uses the tattoo of the stars on his hand to make sure they're going the right way. Now the wolf trusts Keita and sleeps next to him and lets Keita pet it. After a day at the lake, where they bathe and catch some fish, Keita decides to give the wolf a name Alpha. They keep going on their journey and winter finally comes with lots of snow everywhere. One calm evening when they're sitting by a bonfire, a group of wolves comes up to them and they're Alpha's family. Keita understands how Alpha must be missing them, so he tells Alpha to go be with its own kind and leaves Keita to continue his journey by himself. As time goes by, the snowstorms happen more often and it makes it really hard for Keita to keep moving forward. He can't stop thinking about a sad dream he had where his dad, Tao, comes home and tells his mom, Ro, something really bad. After struggling through a bunch of stormy days, Keita suddenly runs into Alpha and the other wolves. He gets all excited and goes toward them, but the ice under him breaks and he falls into freezing water. His mom's fur and most of his stuff drift away and he's stuck there, but he's quick and uses his knife to make a hole in the ice, and Alpha pulls him out. Keita and Alpha keep on their journey together. One super cold night, Keita hugs Alpha to stay warm because he's freezing. They keep going for a few more miles and find footprints that lead them to a hut. But it's really sad because the person who was in there couldn't handle the cold and passed away. Even though there's no food, Keita grabs a bow and arrows and starts coughing up blood even though Alpha is worried and trying to stop him. Later on, things get really tough for Keita and Alpha. They've got scary hyenas chasing them and there's a dangerous storm coming up. They run as fast as they can until they find a cave to hide in. But there's a big mean cave lion inside and it attacks them. Alpha fights the lion bravely and Keita gets his bow and arrow ready to help. Keita manages to beat the lion and save Alpha, but Alpha is hurt pretty bad. They keep going slowly through the snowstorm and finally they find a sculpture that marks the sacred path. Keita sees it as a good sign like their ancestors are showing them the way. One night, they feel happier because they see the northern lights in the sky which they think is a sign they're getting closer to where they want to go. But Alpha starts to get weaker and one day he falls down and can't go on anymore. Keita won't leave his loyal wolf friend behind. Even though he's not feeling great and keeps coughing up blood, he holds onto the weak wolf, cradling it in his arms. The harsh conditions start getting to him and he falls down. But in his darkest moment, Keita remembers something from a dream. It's like a secret talk he heard between his parents the night before they left. In the dream, Keita's dad, Tao, tells his mom, Ro, not to worry and says he believes in Keita's hidden strength, which is even bigger than he thought. This makes Keita feel strong and determined when he wakes up. He picks up Alpha and keeps going through the storm, getting closer to rejoining his tribe. When Keita and Alpha finally make it back to their tribe, the people there are totally amazed. Tao is so emotional and proud of his son that he brings them both into a tent to take care of them. Keita gets all the help he needs like food and medicine and the shaman checks out Alpha, the shaven figures out what's wrong. Turns out Alpha is actually a lady wolf about to have puppies. Everyone's really relieved when all the wolf puppies are born healthy and strong. The tribe is super happy and welcomes the little wolf pups into their family. As the years go by, the wolf puppies grow up into full-grown wolves, and they become buddies with the hunters. They all go on big hunting trips together before winter comes, and it makes a really strong bond between the people and the wolves in the tribe. So the moral of the story is to befriend wolves, all you need to do is survive a whirlwind of wild escapades, and before you know it, they'll join your hunting squad, no formal application required.